Let's just say I love Wendy. <laughs> I love Wendy down, honey. And what's the business, y'all? This should be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new review of The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 2. What is going on, you guys? Yes, your boy is still in the ATL until tomorrow afternoon. Yes, I'm still here. I'm still here. Still here. However, I'm still having myself a great old time. You know, last night we was at Jamie's baby shower, and I had a great time with Jamie, um, her, um, her fiancé, her family, her friends. They're all nice people. Me and Jamar and my two other friends that was there, we had a great, great, like, great time. I really enjoyed myself. Shout out to Jamie. And uh, me and Jamie are collaborating um, soon. So make sure you guys get into that. You know, we we already intended on collaborating um, on doing something else. So make sure y'all get into that. All right. But before we get into today's review, let's talk about what we got coming up on the horizon. Now, today is the Whether You Like It or Not panel, okay? And it will be on giving you the Real Tees platform, honey, all right? Make sure you guys tune in tonight at 8.15 Eastern Time on giving you the Real Tees platform. I won't be there, but Schoolboy will definitely be in the building. So make sure you guys get into that. Then on Wednesday, it is the Chasing panel. That stars not only me, but Jamar, Terrence, Tramiel, Carl, and Jeremy. We go live every Wednesday night after the after chasing Atlanta goes off. So make sure you guys get into that. And um, there won't be no boys night out on Friday, but um, there will be a live review on love and marriage Huntsville this Saturday. So make sure you guys get into that as well. And um, me and Bundy are supposed to film for one-on-one -on -one this week, but due to my scheduling and me being out of town, we may have to push that, push it back. So, um, but yes, Bundy blue is the next person for one-on-one. -on -one, so make sure you guys, be prepared for that. All right. So with that being said, child, that's pretty much all that we got. So let's go ahead and get into this review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. So we open it up with Ashley and Mrs. Puff, a.k.a. Hi, Mama. All right. We open it up with them. They go on shopping for her housewarming party that she's about to have, right? And so, you know, Ashley's just talking about how, you know, she loves her house and how, you know, great it's been and how she's doing everything on her own without Michael and stuff like that. So they're just looking for things that, you know, she didn't want to have nobody over to her house until she got her house all the way together. That sounds like Jamar. But see, I'm the only one that's been here, even though it ain't all the way together. I'm the one that's been here, you know. So, yeah, but that's my best friend. So, of course, I can do that. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so... You know, she's doing that, getting her stuff prepared for the um, housewarming. And then, you know, they start talking about the guest list of people. So basically, you know, she got Giselle on the list, of course. She got, you know, Robin on the list. She has Sharice on the list. Um, what else she got? Uh, she got Wendy on the list. Um, she got her new friend, NECA, on the list, okay? So she says that she loves NECA. You know, NECA is on like a Nigerian girl. She was raised in Nigeria. I think she was. I think she was raised in Nigeria. She's um, She has real generational wealth and all that other good stuff, okay? So um, that's her new friend. And, you know, we're ready to see what NECA gives. I'm not one of them type of people that's going to judge NECA based off of what we've seen in like the blocks because, you know, I don't know why Twitter gave us this for you option, and I and that's how I'm I'm around all this damn housewife stands and these Nikki stands and shit shit that I don't even give a fuck about. But a lot of people were already not liking NECA due to her affiliation with the Green Eye Bandits and Sharice. You know what I mean? That's why a lot of people wasn't feeling her. Now I ain't gonna do that. I'm gonna give her ass a chance, and I'm gonna see how she really is before I decide to judge. Because just because she with the green eye bandits don't mean that I ain't gonna like her. Just saying. However, but uh, yeah, so she's invited. So Miss Sheila, Mrs. Puff, asks Ashley, is Michael invited? Why the would he be invited? Why would he be invited? So... She was like, no, he's not going to be invited. You know, we, we just, you know, he can't just come over to my house like this and all this other stuff. So, no, he's not really invited. I don't see why she, why he would be invited. I mean, I get that he helped her pay the house, pay for the house or whatever he did for her. And they went on trips and stuff. But he don't need to be coming to the damn housewarming party, especially amongst all these women. But my thing is, when it comes down to these women, they 
really allow Michael to be around and get away with all the stuff that he has done, especially with the whole grabbing on the ass and all this other stuff. They really be letting him get away with it after they drug him for so many years about said situation. So how the fuck y'all sitting up here being okay with this situation? And I, yeah, I don't get it. Maybe it's not for me to get, but okay, girl, I don't, I, I don't understand at all. But okay. Um, you know, Ashley was just talking about her relationship with Michael as of right now and how they're getting along and how things are working for them and stuff like that. So she says they're just trying to make the co-parenting thing be what it needs to be. And that's all they're focused on. They're not really going to be focused on nothing but co-parenting. Like they don't need to be sleeping around with each other. They don't need to be kissing on each other and all this other stuff. Like they just need to focus on co-parenting, focus on the children. And that's all they need to be focused on. And I agree with that. I mean, I'm not opposed to um two people that have been divorced but got kids and they are in a decent space because I wish I would have had that when I was growing up because baby, my mom and dad would never my mom and dad were never married when they had me. But I know that when they did break up, they could not get along. And being and because of that, you know, that created different things like me and my um, siblings relationships were strained because our parents couldn't get along. Um, we didn't get to have a relationship until we were like much older, like until we were in our 20s, like late 20s at that, because our parents didn't get along so much when we were young that kept us from really growing up together. So my parents get along now. My mom and dad get along just fine now, even though I'm. Middle, I'm a middle aged man at this point. I'm an auntie at this point. So we get, they get along now, and I'm very grateful for that. At least I know that if I'm doing something big, I can have both my mom and my dad present, and there'll be no issue. So I'm all for um, Ashley and Michael doing what they need to do to make sure that they are copacetic for the sake of their, uh, for the sake of Tommy and Deal. I'm just saying. Um, they start talking about Michael's lawsuit with Candace. And um, Michael, I mean, Ashley said that she really doesn't know much about this case. She really been staying away from that because it really ain't got nothing to do with her. It's more so about Michael. And, you know, you know, she just felt like you can't out, go out and say all these salacious things about people and then not expect for them to blow back. But the stuff that Candace actually said about Michael, Ashley, it ain't like it's a lie. You know, it ain't no lie. So stop acting like it's a lie. You know, it's not. So I, I don't understand. I'm not understanding that. Like, girl, you know that the girl ain't telling no lies. You know that everything that she said about Michael ain't no motherfucking lie. You know that. So stop playing it. Stop playing games with the people. You know it ain't no lies being told about that man. You know that everything that Candace said he did, he did it. So then Mrs. Puff asked Ashley, is Candace invited to the housewoman? And, and Ashley said, absolutely not. And to be honest, I like Candace, but girl, no, you don't need to be invited to that girl uh, housewoman party. You'll be bringing demons up in there. Not saying that you're a demon yourself, but I'm saying you don't like her. So why would, you know, Ashley even want you there, honestly? And I don't understand why Ashley and Candace just cannot get along for the life of me? I feel like they are too much alike to not get along. But maybe that is why they can't get along because they're too much alike. A lot of the times when when you're when you meet people and you and they do a you on you, you don't like that because baby, I know I am a victim of that. I know that when somebody pull a me on me, I don't like it. So you know it is what it is. Like, and that's the hypocrisy of it all. Like I can do you, but you can't do me. So you know. I get it. So I think that Ashley and Candace are very similar. And I've always said that, but people be trying to cut my head off when I say that, but they are. They have different characteristics, of course, but they're one and the same to me. Two sides are the same coin, in my opinion. So we're going to go ahead and get into Karen and Mia. They meet up, okay, to talk about how Mia was a backstabbing mother to Karen when she got up under these other girls. You feel what I'm saying? So Karen basically said, I have always been there for you, Mia. I've always stood up for you. I have always had your back. I have always defended you. And the one time I really needed it for you to step in for me and have my back, you did not have my back. You threw me under the bus and, and perpetuated those lies about me. Me and you are both married women. Why would you sit up here and perpetuate a lie about me having infidelity and all of this other stuff when you're just as, when you're married just like me? So how do you think? Your husband would have felt if someone said that you were sleeping around on your husband and all this other stuff. And so Mia started to say, 
It wasn't a lie. Like, I don't feel like what I said was a lie. I mean, girl, it was a lie that somebody else told you and you decided to repeat the shit. So no matter who told you the shit, it was made up and it was a lie. You know it was a lie. And for Karen to be your friend, you should have never repeated that shit. Period. You would never see me repeat anything about Josiah. You would never see me repeat anything about Terrence. You would never see me repeat anything about Jamie. You would never see me repeat anything about Maddie. You would never see me repeat anything about Aaron. You know what I mean? Or Brooke. Those are my friends. You would never see me repeat anything about these people. So it's so to me, it's kind of like, why would you, why would you do that? You know what I mean? I wish somebody would come to me with some rumor about Sakina or really be. And then I sit up here and I'd be like, and I repeat it. Like, why would I repeat that? When I know that these, these are my friends, these are my people. I know them really, really well, especially Jojo T and Aaron. I like, <laughs> like, come on. And Jamie, like, come on now. I would never do that. Like, that is just some up ash. Like, I would never repeat no stuff that somebody said about my friends. If anything, I would check that shit before it lands over here at me. That's how I feel. I would never, ever do that. So it's just, it is what it is. I don't like that. And Mia noticed she was wrong, but for her to sit up here and say, it wasn't a lie. Like, girl, you don't know what a lie is because you, well, you should know what a lie is because that's all you ever do is tell lies. So, I mean, what, what gives? But okay, girl, whatever. Um, They argue about the truth. They argue about what is the truth and what's not in the, at the end of the day. And Karen was like, you know what? It is what it is. Karen basically just don't really know how to treat Mia going forward or how to feel about her going forward because Mia has shown her card and it is not the ace of spades. It's draw four and draw two. She's, she's shown her uno cards already. So at this point, it's like, Karen, you got to figure out if you really want this girl to really be in your space like that. Because if she going to continue to lie on you like that, you don't need her around you. And that's on period. You need no one to be around you doing no phony ass like that. No one around you doing it. So I don't agree. Like, I'm not here for that. And like, if you're going to sit up here and pretend like you're my friend and sit around here and allow me, I don't need you in my space. So, but you know, these girls are on a show and I got to be cool with each other. That's the reason I can't mind you. But you know, that's what it is. Um, Let's see. So then they discussed the money issues with G and um, you know how Giselle was saying somebody looked like a little bit of embezzlement, which that should let you know that Giselle ain't your friend because she really said that shit on national TV that she felt like it was some embezzlement. But then me, a dumbass, gonna turn around and say, well, you know, I thought the same thing too. You know, I thought the same thing too. I really thought that it was embezzlement as well. Like, that's what I thought as well. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Girl, you never think. You never think, so stop. You never think about anything. Because if you really think, you wouldn't even be doing this that you be doing or saying this that you be saying if you really think about stuff. But okay, girl. You better think, girl. You better think your ass along, girl. Anyway, um, let me see. Um, then she would start saying that um she started to stop drinking and stuff because you know it was she was mixing pills with alcohol and all the, all types of stuff. So that's probably she feel like that's probably why her attitude and her you know behavior was a little bit erratic because she was drinking a whole lot and mixing it with with pills and stuff and things of that nature and stuff like that. So that's why she feel like you know. Yeah, that's why I was acting like that because, you know, I had a cocktail of some pills and, and some alcohol and, you know, I, I did too much with that. So you got to excuse that because, you know, I was doing a lot of alcohol and stuff like that. You know, you got to excuse my behavior because I was doing that. And I feel like that's why Mia said that shit because she wanted her behavior to be excused. Honestly, that's what she wanted. Um, Karen says she's optimistic about her and Mia. I wouldn't be. Karen says that she just don't know where to place her. You should know. And she says that she didn't want no hug from Mia. She just wanted uh, a handshake. That's the thing she can give Mia. I wouldn't give her nothing but my ass to kiss, to be honest. Because she really flipped on you, especially when you call her out about the Wendy, especially when you call her out about the way that she attacked Wendy last season. So, yeah, it was, yeah. She already showed you her card, Karen. 
I know y'all hate when I constantly say this, but this is why I can't be on reality TV. I cannot fake the funk for nobody. Like, I just cannot fake the funk. When I don't like you, I don't like you. And that's just it. That's just it. Um, We're going to move on to the next. So, we get into Candace. And they're sitting, she's having a meeting with her person. I think that's her manager or somebody. I'm not really sure. But they're, they're having a meeting about um, her music going forward. Now, she's on um, the label Monarch. It used to be E1, okay? And um, she says that at this point in time, you know, e, uh, Monarch was a great starting point for her. Her contract with Monarch is about to be up now, so she's looking for more greener pastures, in meaning she's looking for a more major label um, because Monarch is a small label. You know, I know Kay Michelle is on Monarch. I know that Drew Sador is on Monarch. It's a lot of um, older legacy artists as well that's on Monarch. A lot of these legacy artists are, or older artists, so to speak, are on these like independent labels because majors really don't want to invest in them because they don't think that they... Um, they can really market them like that. Like, I know that when K. Michelle left Atlantic, she went to Monarch when it was E1 still. And, um, you know, a lot of, like I said, a lot of these artists do that. Faith Evans was is on E1, well, Monarch. All these older legacy artists and artists like K. Michelle who are kind of current, but they're, they're getting older because I know K is in her 40s now. So no major label is really going to put too much behind like a 40-year-old R&B singer like they do a 40-year-old rapper like a Nicki Minaj. Like they're not going to do that. And that is the politics of the industry, unfortunately. That's what they do. Um... So Candace wants to move forward and go to like a major label or whatever. I don't know if that's going to happen though, because while she's been on Monarch, she's been doing, she's had like minor success. But the problem with me feeling this way is Candace has good music, but they never sent her music to radio though. Like there's no reason why Dryback wasn't on radio. Like, they could sing like that song has so much potential, in my opinion. She could have sent this shit to make like pop radio or like rhythmic radio or like top 40 because it got that top 40 sound to it. It sounded like one of those songs that would have been played on top 40 radio back when I was in middle school. And that ain't even no shade. Like it just gives that much nostalgia when I listen to the song. And I could have heard that being played on like a pop station. They it could have been played on urban. But Urban probably would have played it just because she's black anyway. So they probably would have played on Urban. They probably would have played on Urban AC. Like, Dryback could have been a big record for her. But it wasn't a big record for her. Like, it did good for what it need, for, for her being a housewife, yeah. But as far as a legit singer, I don't feel like Dryback really did anything. Like, we didn't see the impact that it could have given her. You get what I'm saying? Like... I just never understood why it wasn't on the radio. And if it was on the radio, I never heard it on the radio. I, I just automatically assume that they didn't put any records out on the radio because Kate Michelle, y'all know I love her, and but that new album is horrible. But none of her songs went to the radio. Only Scooch went to the radio, and that was last year. She put out a whole bunch of other songs like You, Wherever the Ding May Land, all that. Never went to the radio. Only one song went to the radio. So I don't recall Candace sending any song to the radio. That's even with Drew Sedora. Throw Us Away is a great record. Why they not sending it to the radio? Why there isn't a video for it? You know? Anyway. They started talking about the Deep Space Tour and how they spent over six figures on this tour already and all that good stuff. So they're already going into everything. So they was like, well, we got the Chicago show. Should we ask Drew Sedora to open it up? And so... Candace was giving a, a lot of shade to Drew, in my opinion. Now, I know she took her ass on Twitter and said the conversation really didn't go that way. Like it like it was edited, it didn't go that way. But girl, when we saw it, it looked like it was shade. And we just got to keep it a book. We just got to gotta keep it 100. It looked like shade. A whole lot of shade. Okay? And Candace, listen, I love you, girl, but you still on Deep Space. We've been on Deep Space since 2021. We in 2023 going to 2024. You need to be on a new album by now. Like you've been like you've been deep spacing us to death. Like we should, you've been on deep space since season six. We need to get to another album now in season eight. I know you say you're about to do new music. Let's let's get into the new music. Because right now, Drew is kind of 
getting ready to kill your ass with this housewife fan base war with this music because throw us away is my jam baby y'all want to know how much i listen to throw us away let me show y'all before we move on to the next thing let me look at my um what my playlist is the 2023 replay thing this is how much i listen to throw us away you see it it's number three throw us away is number three honey throw us away so yeah we need to come up with the new music uh candace um we introduce no 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 we want to this time we're going to robin and one, oh God, I could just, I could have just fell asleep. At this point, that's where I was ready to go to sleep at when I saw them pop up, but whatever, child. Um, They're talking about the chitter chatter. You know, Robin basically was telling him about how the girls set her down at Giselle's house and told her how, you know, how they felt about everything that was going on with Juan and stuff. And, you know, she said she really doesn't care what anybody thinks. We know that you don't care about what anybody thinks because you like looking like a complete idiot. and. And you are an idiot. That's your specialty. So you do you, do you, do you, girl? Like, by all means, do you, boo-boo? Do you? Um, they discussed the lawsuit, and um, Robin feels like, you know, Juan didn't do anything wrong. And being that um, he has that lawsuit against him is becoming kind of difficult for Juan to find a job. Um, I will say that everybody used to think that Juan was so damn fine, and I never just seen it for Juan like that. Juan looks stressed the out and he's looked stressed the fuck out for the last couple of seasons. Shout out to Eddie Osefo for being the finest husband on this show. Shout out to him because I always felt like Eddie was the finest one since he's been up here. Okay, I'm just being honest. But uh, but yeah, it like that's that was pretty much all that Robin and Warren had to talk about. Really, I didn't really care about nothing that they talking about because it's really them playing a the victim about lying to the people about what was really going on in their relationship. That's all this is, and don't nobody really care. So we can move on. Um, so at this point, we're being introduced to the new girl, Nika. Okay, that's what we're being introduced to. First of all, Nika is fine. Okay. This mother is fine. She's beautiful. You, I, you know, I love me a dark skinned person. You know, I love me a dark skinned man. Love me a dark skinned woman. Love me a lot of chocolate and stuff. She's so beautiful to me. Now, if I was into the, uh, if I was on the other side of the fence, I would gladly jump that motherfucker for her. Okay. She's fine as, you know, what the, y'all remember that Hurricane Chris song? Halle Berry, Halle Berry. Halle Berry, Halle Berry, she finding the beard. <laughs> what? Okay. I played that for Nisi because I think that Nisi is fine as too. Okay. So happy belated birthday to Nisi Dixon, by the way. Um, so let's get into some things with her. So apparently, um, NECA, that where they're, where they're looking for a new, they, they bought a new home in uh, Potomac. Okay. So they're just getting it fixed up so they can be in there. She got a um, husband by the name of Ike. He's a doctor. Okay. Nice looking man. He's fine as too. I love, I, we, we stand a, a, a fine Nigerian couple. Yes, we do over here on Scotty by Nature TV. Yes, the, we do. Okay. Anyway, so then, um, um, he's a doctor in the daytime, but a nightclub on it at night. You better get them coins, honey. Get them coins. Get them coins. So then, um, Nike, Aneka, and Ike are having a hard time conceiving. Like she's, they're trying to have a baby. They're trying to have their first child, and she, they've been trying and trying and trying, and they don't know what's going on. So she got to go to the doctor and figure those things out. So I'm looking forward to this story with Nika and Ike. Like I said, I'm gonna give her a chance. I'm not gonna do this pre favorite housewife bullshit just because i seen her on pictures with the with the with the green eyed bandits and shit like that i'm not gonna judge her you know i'm gonna wait till she give me a reason to judge her ass so then we get into wendy i love wendy love wendy um she's trying to start a talk show now wendy 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 where are your candles at we ain't heard about them candles in season six where are your candles at that's number one number two where your restaurant at? Number three. Now you want to do a talk show? I can see Wendy doing a political talk show. Like, that's her bread and butter. Like, Wendy got the intelligence, you know, the presence, the, the charisma to do a political show. 
my urban deep fried ghetto ass could never do that that's why i stick to what i'm doing right now but i'm moving to the music arena next year so y'all be ready for that but you know that's how i feel about that so yes honey get to the things baby but that's it like they were just trying to figure out names for this show that she's trying to do but that was all we had for wendy child um we get into karen ashley giselle and mia they're working out. They're doing the triple 20 working out because Karen is turning the, tri the triple 20 this year. And what they mean by the triple 20 is 60. She don't want to say 60. She said the triple 20. Okay. So they're doing a workout. And then um, Ashley asks about Karen's relationship with Mia. Why are you asking? Um, Karen says that, um, you know, her and Mia have had a conversation. They've talked, you know, but they're just trying to move forward. Giselle asks Karen to apologize to Robin. Who the for you to ask anybody to apologize to Robin? You Jimmy Dean sausage and Nick ass mother. Why don't you go and apologize to Candace for maligning her husband, for perpetuating rumors about her fucking husband, for make for creating a narrative about her husband? Why don't you apologize to her for doing that shit to her? Why don't you apologize to her for doing that? You so quick to tell somebody who they need to apologize to, but you don't apologize to nobody. Typical Virgo shit. Hey, sister. Hey, my little sister. You act just like this mother. But yeah, like, it's just, I can't. I can't with that. Um, Karen don't think she need to, oh, she need to apologize to Robin. She says, but then again, she says that she will apologize to Robin if Robin apologized to her because Robin, because because we now we're not going to act like Robin ain't been on Karen's for many many seasons. It's just Karen's turn to ride hers right now, and some of y'all can't handle that. Um, Ashley says that she's not divorced yet. Ashley and Giselle talk about Candace, and Giselle said, "Who is Candace? I don't even know who she is." And then Ashley said, "No, she's not invited to my uh, housewarming." She said her new friend Neca is coming, and she cannot wait for them to meet her. So now it's time for the housewarming. Everybody's coming in. Everybody arrives. Um, Ashley gets ready to do a house tour, and then Wendy comes in. And one thing about Wendy, I love Wendy because she don't give up. She walked in and bypassed Giselle ass and bypassed Mia ass and only hugged Karen and Sharice. She barely wanted to hug Sharice. So I was here for the energy. And Giselle, I can't stand Giselle, y'all. Because when Wendy walked in, you did y'all see Giselle? She just got up and did this. Like Wendy was disgusting or something. Like, girl, I highly doubt Wendy wanted to speak to your ass anyway. This ain't last season. She not trying to be up in your good graces. She not trying to be cool with you. She not trying to coexist with you. You can move the f*** on. That's what you can do. So stop it with the bull. Like, stop it with the bullshit, Giselle. Who the f*** are you? That's, that, that's all I keep asking y'all. Like, who the f*** is she? And why the f*** does she think she's so motherfucking important? Like you, Giselle. Go somewhere and sit down. Anyway. Um, next thing you know, Deborah shows up and Wendy looking at her like, why is Cookie Monster here? Okay. Then, um, you know, Robin arrives. She, she speaks to everybody, even Wendy. Then, um, the girls meet NECA. So, Ashley was like, she wanted to have a conversation with Wendy on the side. So, she talks to Wendy and they have a discussion about their friendship. And Wendy has grown to like Ashley, but she wants to be certain that Ashley's not going to stab her in the back. Girl, she is. She is. So you may as well get yourself prepared for it. Ashley is one of them people that you cannot be close to, okay? It has to be very surface. It has to be a very surface relationship. You cannot be close to the likes of an Ashley Darby. You cannot because she would she would strike your ass at any given moment. So you cannot be that close to her at all. Wendy, you better watch out. Wendy, did, Wendy said that she doesn't want to be stabbed in the back by Ashley. Ashley said she's not going to do that. Lies. Then um, that's when Ashley told Wendy about Nicka's comments. So we already know at this point that Wendy and Necker are going to have beef later on in the season, right? Now we're seeing where it stems from. Ashley started it. <laughs> like, Ashley really started this beef with Wendy and Necker. 
So I hope that at the reunion, and I know it's too early to say that, but I hope that at the reunion, she gets called out for that because she started this shit. Straight up started this shit. She's nothing but another, a light-skinned version of Sheree. That's how she is. She got this shit started. Okay, like period. So we're going to see how this stuff plays along because she really pitted, pitted them against each other. So quick. So we're going to see. But we're going to see what happens because I don't, I don't like to see NECA and Wendy like you know, not being cool. I don't like that. You know, I don't like that. I, I wanted them to be cool with each other. But anyway, honey. All right. Let's go ahead and get into, let, we're about to pay some bills and then we're going to get the fuck out of here, honey. All right. So before we go, we got our very own Tramiel. Okay. He's from the Chasing Panel. All right. And he has a brand new song out now called Long Days. It's available now. So make sure you guys stream it. Purchase it and all that good stuff. And then we have Bando. Shout out to Bando. Bando's Dream is out now. And it's now available on Spotify, Apple Music, as well as YouTube. So make sure you guys support my Bando. Okay? <laughs> so with that being said, you guys, this be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And also click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And if you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok, We'll be down below. With that being said, you guys, this is your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and I'll see you guys for my Married to Medicine review, which is up next, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, y'all.